Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you love Jesus, can you put your hands together? Can you stand up on your feet and let's give God some praise in this place today? You didn't have to be here, but you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless him today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We want to welcome him into this place this morning. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank and praise you for once again bringing us into this place. We thank you for every breath that we take, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for giving us eyes to see, ears to hear, Lord. We, you, we thank you for the small the things that seem small but are so vitally important, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for health and strength, Lord. Thank you for family, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord. Hallelujah. As we go throughout this day and as we go throughout this week, Lord, we ask that your blessing be with us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, protect us, Lord. Strengthen us in your word. Strengthen us in your spirit, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for Elder Bobby this morning, Lord. 
in Jesus' name. Let your will be done, Lord. Let your will be done, Lord. Hallelujah. Let your will be done, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we, we know if he could, he would be right here in the front row, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. That, that's why we thank you for so many things that seem small, hallelujah, but are pertinent in our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray for our families, each and every individual, Lord. Take a moment and pray for members of your family. In the name of Jesus, prayer is essential and important, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. 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 Elder Halfacre is coming to lead us in scripture. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our scripture reading is going to be coming from Romans chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. We're going to read it together. Amen. Amen. Well, Y'all quick today. I don't hardly hear no pages turning. <laughs> Romans chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. Y'all know how we do. We pause at the comma, stop at the periods. Amen. Amen. And it reads all together. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting. Yeah, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have read Romans chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and most of all, the doers of his word. And we're in the hands of our announcer, Mother Drew. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Again, we welcome you to our Sunday morning live stream here at Abundant Love Church. And if you're in the Fort Wayne area, our live streams are open. You are welcome to come join us in our regular worship services. We are still observing social distancing, and we have temperature checks upon entering the sanctuary for your safety and ours. Amen. Our upcoming events include, we are continuing our survey through the epistles of the New Testament. For the remainder of March, we will continue to study out of the book of Romans. This week we will review chapter 6, and next week we will review chapter 7. If you are not on our email list and you want to survey through the epistles with us, you can comment below with your email address or email us at AbundantLove at Frontier.com to receive a bi-weekly study outline. For the month of April, which is next month, we will be celebrating our past, pastor's 29th anniversary. Amen. 29 years. Hallelujah. That he's been on the wall for us. Amen. The theme for this anniversary is celebrating strong and courageous leaders. Sorry. With the subtopic being, you've come this far by faith. Amen. This theme comes from Isaiah 41 and 10. We want to continue to pray for uh, Elder Robert Bush, Travion Hilliard, Nathan Lake, and Kiara Casey. We still have special prayer out for uh, Raphael Martin and Sean Pearson. Please continue to pray for the Amos and Mayo family as they celebrate the life of Angelique Mayo on yesterday. Our birthdays for this week, on the 14th, we had our own Minister Winston Pearson. And on the 17th, all the way from Ohio, we had uh, Patricia Lara, her birthday. We want to say happy birthday to her. And while I'm on the, the acknowledgement, we want to acknowledge 
Sister Josie for being with us on this morning, all the way from Carolina. And also Sister Brittany back there. Amen. Whenever our saints leave, we always love for them to come back and visit with us. We have also, I see Ebony's mom is smiling at her back there. Amen. We thank the Lord for her on this morning. And Sister Kathy. Amen. We thank the Lord for them on this morning. If you would like to make a contribution to our church, you may do so in several ways. You may use Cash App, and that's dollar sign Abundant Love Church. You may give through Givelify at Abundant Love Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Make sure you specify Fort Wayne, Indiana. Our mailing address is Post Office Box 6577, Fort Wayne, Indiana 46896. If you happen to be in our area and you would like to drop it off, our address is 2615 New Haven Avenue, Fort Wayne, Indiana. And if you would like to give a special contribution to our pastor, his cash app is dollar sign pastor GLB2, and that's all lowercase letters. If you would like to join us in our regular services, on Sundays we have Sunday School live stream at 9 a.m., Sunday School in session classes at 9.50 a.m., and our morning worship is at 10.45 a.m. On Wednesdays we have intercessory prayer at 6 o'clock p.m., and our own Disciples Academy Bible study begins at 6.30 p.m. If you happen to miss some of our live streams, we are archived on Abundant Love Church Facebook page and also YouTube channel AL Ministries. That's capital A, capital L Ministries. Early Monday morning, if you need a pickup, we do have a Motivating Moments video and it starts at approximately 8 o'clock a.m. These are all our announcements, and please govern yourself accordingly. At this time, we're going to call our praise team. Put your hands together for the praise team as they come. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord. Can we give a Lord a hand clap of praise on this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, let's praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He deserves a great praise. He's a great God. He deserves a mighty praise. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. Can we stand to our feet and give him praise? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. There's praise in the room. There's joyfulness in the yeah, room. Yeah. The Spirit of the Lord is in the room. Hallelujah. So we have to acknowledge him. Hallelujah. Because he's a mighty God. Hallelujah. No matter what we've gone through on last week, hallelujah, he is yet worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His love is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Praise God. Hallelujah. I forgot the song. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. How about it? Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on and clap your hands with us. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to hallelujah. be praised. Hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, 
Sing, I lift my hands. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. Sing to you this 
song I just want to say that I love you more than anything I lift my hands I lift my hands in total adoration unto you you reign you reign I worship and adore you. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Stay right there. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love. I love. worship and adore you just want to tell you Lord I love you more than anything let's go up I love you Jesus I love you Jesus I worship and Come on and lift your hands and give him some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we worship you, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I love you more than anything. Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more. Lord, I love you more than anything. 
How many know Jesus made you a promise? Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus made me a promise. Now tell them, say, he's a promise keeper. Amen. I don't know about you, but it kind of bothers me when people make me a promise and break their promises. Amen. But how many know that God is a promise keeper? Every promise the Bible said of God is yea and amen. Yea means yes. And amen says or means I'm in agreement. How many are in agreement with the promise of God on your life? Well, that's why you got to study the word. The Bible uh, lets us know that there are great and precious promises uh, made to us. Amen. But somebody sang a song said you can't stand on promises if you don't know what they are. How many know that the Lord has promised you life? And I'm not talking about the Constitution. Now. I'm talking about the Bible. The Bible has promised you life. It says for our years are three score and ten, and if by reason of strength, four score. So in my way of thinking, you should be looking for at least 70 years. Amen, according to the scripture. And if by reason of strength, what kind of strength? Not just physical strength, spiritual strength. Confidence in the word of God. How many got confidence in God's word? Amen. Confidence in his word. And, and, and then there are a few natural laws that you have to uh, cooperate with if you want a long life. I was at the homegoing celebration of Angelique Mayo yesterday. And the preacher said, how many of you want long life? Everybody hands went up. I leaned over the person next to me and I said, with health. Amen. You don't want long life all by itself. You got to have some health to go along with it. Amen. Amen. So there are a few natural laws we need to pay attention to. Uh, you can't stay up late at night and jump up early in the morning. You got to get some sleep. Look, somebody said, get some sleep. Not in church, but get some sleep. Amen. Stay awake in church. All right. Look at somebody say, we would, you know, we just got done saying and said, live right. But part of living right is eating right. Look at somebody say, eat right. Now look them right in the eye. Challenge them and say, are you eating your vegetables? All right. You got, you can't, you can't fry everything. Amen. Amen. You can't fry Amen. We, and we the grilling this people. People just waiting for the sun to come out so they can push that grill out. Amen. But I want you to know something. You can't eat all fried and grilled meat. Brothers, we need some green vegetables. Get the zinc out of it. Amen. To help get roughage and so that your body operates like it should. Amen. So you got to sleep right. You got to eat right. You all ready for this next one? It's called exercise. Amen. You got to move your body. You got to move your body. Y'all know that Disney song that said, I like to move it. <laughs> All right. You got to get to the place where you love to move that body. When you move that body, you move the blood. The blood is just like water and a river. Anytime water moves, it creates life. And any time it is stagnant, it will sour and kill things. The Dead Sea is called the Dead Sea because it has water coming in and no water going out. And so the bloodstream is something you have to move. The Bible says that life is in the blood. Have you wondered why the doctor always wants you to give labs? They can tell a number of things about your health by looking at your blood. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here? I'm talking real good right now. Amen. They want to look at your labs. They want to make sure you're not eating too much sugar, not eating too much salt, don't have too much fat or lipids in your blood. They want to make sure that it's fluid enough. They want to look at the count of your hemoglobin. They Come on here. Amen. They want to make sure you have enough plasma in your blood. They, they want to make sure that your health is going in the direction 
Daddy wants to go. They're going to look at your platelets and they're going to look at your leukocytes. They don't want your leukocyte to be too high. It's a sign that you got some kind of infection going on. Leukocytes are the warriors that bite, you know, they fight disease off the body. You know what? I could have been a doctor, but I just, amen. The Lord called me to preach. But just because you got another occupation, you still need good health, amen. Look, somebody say, good health. Now, tell them, say, it's not too late either. Amen. Get up and move it. <laughs> All right, God bless you all. Well, it's time now for us to receive our morning sacrifice, and so I'm going to ask you all to prepare yourselves to give today. <laughs> what shall I render and what shall I give unto God for all of his blessings? All right, all right, all right. Here come the, oh, it's Sister's Day again today. Amen. Here they come. Look how pretty they look today. Amen. Amen. I, I know we got the prettiest offering takers in town today. Amen. All right. If you're going to give by check or cash, you need an envelope. And these two darling young ladies will make sure. So if you just kind of give them a high sign, they'll come to you and bring you an envelope. Amen. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Yes. If you make a check out today, make sure that you make your check out to the Abundant Love Church. For those of you that are going to give by your debit card or your credit card, Sister Natasha will have the card slider for you. I want to encourage you to be generous with the church. Amen. Let's make sure that the church has what it needs. We have some things in line as soon as the weather breaks. I got an email this week from the Muriel people. And as soon as the weather breaks, they're going to start the Muriel on the side of our building. Right. Yeah. Amen, somebody. And that, that mural costs up in the thousands of dollars, and it is provided for us free of charge. Yeah. Amen. And it doesn't make sense to have a new paint job on a mural and not a new paint job on the church. Amen. Amen. So we have some things in line, so we need you to be generous with the church today. Amen. All right, those of you that are going to give by your mobile phone, there are two ways that you can give. The first way to give, we use the app GiveLify, and has been stated earlier, I uh, want to make sure that you get the Abundant Love Church in the city of Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then after GiveLify, you can use a very popular application called Cash App. Our Cash App address is dollar sign abundant love church amen well i'm not gonna give because i only got a little bit every little bit helps amen do you all understand that the bible tells us to be diligent to know the state of our flocks that means know well and look well into your money amen some people walk by money see money on the ground they figure it's not worth picking up amen I pick it up. I look around to see if I find the owner. And if I don't find the owner, I become the new owner. Amen, somebody. Did, did I say something wrong? Amen. So if you lose some money, come and ask me. I might have it. But if you don't come and ask me, I'm going to add it to the collection. <laughs> All right. Do you, all, do you all know the pastor comes through the sanctuary after service? And sometimes he find money on the floor. Uh, sometimes he find other things on the floor, too. Uh, candy paper. Uh, Kleenex. <laughs> Amen. Ain't nobody saying nothing here. Water bottles. Okay, don't leave your water bottle in the sanctuary. 
Amen. Don't forget it. Okay. All right. So everybody ready to give now? Man, I want to mention again how happy we are. We have, we have people from far and wide here today. Amen. Sister Josephine is home all the way from, it was in South Carolina, right? Amen. South Carolina. Amen. We have Lydia, uh, I say Dupree. <laughs> Amen. With that's what I say. That's what I've known her just about all her life. Amen. She's here. Amen. She's here from the state of Ohio. Amen. So we're happy to have her. I see Brittany. Brittany, girl, look at Brittany. <laughs> Amen. All right. All right. All right. I I had to threaten. I had to threaten Brittany this morning. I, I, I said, where my boys at? She said, Pastor, I didn't bring them this time. Did they ask about you? I said, don't you come in here no more without them. Amen. All right. When you love people, you're glad to see them. Amen. Okay. All right. Let's, everybody ready to give? Okay. Let's pray over the offering here. I'm happy also to have uh, Kathy Umbrella. She's here visiting here among us this morning. We're glad to have her. Amen. Okay, all right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to give. You said that you gave seed to the sower. So I thank you for putting seed into the hand of people who understand that you don't eat up your seed, but you plant your seed so that you can receive a harvest. And Father, I pray that every person that is giving today that you will bless their storehouse in this time of high inflation and elevating prices. I want you to guide us to the places where we get gasoline and groceries and clothes and whatever we need for discounted and better prices. I want you to stretch the money in the hand of your people and prove to us that you are a provider when it comes to your word. Now bless every giver in Jesus' name and the Lord's people said, thank God. Amen and amen. All right, happy everybody is given. <clears throat> that sounds like, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Mm, when Jesus was. When Jesus was. When Jesus was. When Jesus was. Jesus was when Jesus was he washed my sins away. Oh happy day. 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 Come on, church. Oh happy day. Oh happy day. When Jesus was when Jesus was when Jesus was when Jesus was oh, when Jesus was when Jesus was he washed my sins hey. away oh happy day oh happy day oh happy day he taught me day. how he taught me how Rejoicing and live rejoicing. 
happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, when Jesus was. When Jesus was. When Jesus was. When Jesus was. When he was. When Jesus was. Yes, my sins away. Oh, happy day. Come on, clap your hands. How many know it was a happy day? Look at somebody say, oh, happy day! Jesus, wash my sins away. Oh, it is a happy day. It's a happy day in the house of the Lord. Amen, amen. And we're blessed this morning to have Sister Umbolera with us. She's going to come and bring us a sermonic solo. Let's give her a hand. Yeah, there you go. Give her a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, a happy day. Hallelujah. All right, she's getting it together over there. They, they having counsel. Hallelujah. That's all right. That's all right. One thing about communication. <laughs> That's all right. We're about to be blessed. Somebody say, bless us, Lord. All right, all right. All right. Hallelujah. I honor God on today, who is ahead of my life. I'm thankful that I'm able to be here and visit. Uh, my bishop had an incident with his back. So he didn't have church this morning, so I decided to be here. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I just want to say that um, sometimes it's really not the way it looks. I got an unfavorable diagnosis this week, but God reminded me that I got the victory. I got the victory. Can somebody say that for themselves? I got the victory. Hallelujah. So I'm leaning and depending on him. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name Jesus we have the victory hallelujah oh in the name of Jesus it is Oh, tell me who can. 
can step for us when we call on that great name. His name is Jesus. Who shot at us? Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, oh yes, we have, we have the big, we have the big. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Everybody say hallelujah. Come on, look at somebody say, we have victory. How many know? Come on, give him a wave off. Amen. Thank you, Sister Kathy. We have. We have the victory. The Bible says, thanks be unto God who gives us victory. Victory means that you are a winner. Winner implies that you're in some sort of contest with some sort of adversary, something contrary or against you. The Bible says that you're the, the devil, your adversary, is as a roaring lion. Don't miss that it says as a roaring lion. He's not a lion. But he's seeking whom he may devour. But the Bible tells us that if we resist him steadfastly in the faith, the Bible says he'll flee from you. Look at somebody say, put the devil on the run. Oh, he come in huffing and puffing just like he going to blow your house down. But if your house is not made out of straw, not made out of sticks, you know a brick ain't nothing but rock, right? Look at somebody say, I'm on the rock. Amen. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand all of the ground. Is sinking sand. Amen. So we can stand on the Lord and He is able to keep whatever we commit to Him. Amen. Jesus Christ is better than your safety deposit box at the bank. Amen. Whatever you put there, it is secure. And I just decided to put me in His hands. Y'all remember that song said, All in His hands? I put it all in His hands. <laughs> Amen. Every church choir knew that song. Amen. You could turn the place over if you sang it right. I put this and that, this, this, and that. I put it all in his hand. Okay. All, all right. No, no. <laughs> all right. They ready to go. See, y'all ready to go with it. But I got a few other things to do uh, today. Certainly want to. Uh, thank the choir and the praise team for singing so wonderfully today. Thank you, Sister Kathy, uh, for coming and helping to make our service what it was today. Sang one of my favorite songs. He's still playing all in his hand. <laughs> amen, amen. And how many know you need to put it all in his hands? Amen. He can handle it. Amen. He can handle whatever you give him. Amen. Many things come against us throughout the course of the day. But you have to learn when it's time to go to bed, don't take it to bed with you. Amen. You put it in his hands, you sleep. Amen. And then if you have to deal with it tomorrow, pick it up tomorrow. But don't keep it through the night. I heard T.D. Jake say, sometimes you lay down and your mind keep walking the floor. Amen. But you have to learn. Uh, let me give you just a little piece of advice here that has been 
uh, successful for me. You only be concerned about the things that you can control. If you can make a decision and you have some power to manipulate it, then you want to ask the Lord for guidance for how to manipulate it. But please believe me, there are some things that you just have no control over at all. And sometimes we worry about things that we have no control over. Let me ask you a question. Did, did worrying help any? Then why worry? Amen. You put it in the Lord's hands and whatever is right, he will take care of it. So we're happy today. Uh, I'm glad to be here today. Uh, happy to have this opportunity uh, to preach the word of the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. I had to, uh, my, my brother came home this week. Amen. Amen. And the scripture came to mind that his uh, strength is made perfect in our weakness. And while his body may be weak, his faith is strong. Amen. His faith, his faith is strong. And he's, uh, uh, he's turning into my hero. He is just, he is a strong man of faith. And he continues to trust God, even though maybe some physical things may be, you know, may not be working in his favor. And so when I got up this morning, uh, I kind of peeked over in the room. I thought he was asleep. And so I tried to tip back out. He said, I see you looking at me. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm looking at you. I'm trying to see how you doing. He said, I'm doing all right. He said, help me get up. I said, come on, let's go. Amen. So he was able to get up and move a little bit today. Amen. I'm going to do my best to fat him up like the fatted calf. Amen. Amen. Get him back to health. And I'm looking for the Lord to do something miraculous in his life. You all keep praying. Keep praying. Of course. Uh, my home is open for you all to visit. I just want to give you a few ground rules. Man, call before you come. And don't stay all day. <clears throat> Amen. That's, that's, my, that's my advice to you. Because he will talk as long. He'll talk as long as you talk. But he don't need to do a whole lot of talking. And we got some things to do, and I'm, I'm expecting God. You know what? To whom shall we go now? Amen. Do we, we only have the Lord to depend on, and I do what I can control, and what I can't control, I put it in God's hands. And he'll do right by him. Amen? Amen. Thank you all for your prayers. Amen. Everybody that brought something to eat. Amen. Every, good Lord. Now, let, me, let me say this, too. When you bring something to eat, don't bring so much. <laughs> He's not eating a whole lot. And when he don't eat it, we was taught not to let food go to waste. So I can't be eating all that food. <laughs> Amen. Somebody saying, Pastor, I can. Well, I can't. Amen. I'm trying to stay in these roads. <laughs> Amen. And not have, a, not have a, you know, look like I'm in the second trimester while I'm in it. <laughs> so, uh, but I thank you all for the food that you, you all brought. Certainly thank you for your prayers. You all continue to pray. Amen. And, and we will certainly expect God to do something great. Amen. All right. I'm going to call your attention to the sixth chapter of the book of Romans and even the verses that we sang today, verses 22 and 23. Are you all keeping up with the reading? Amen. Amen. If you keep up with the reading, you'll be right in with the message. And it was so good to me today because the Sunday school lesson was dealing with the subject matter of our message today. Amen. So I think anytime God repetitively says something to us, I think it has importance. What about you? Amen. All right. God bless you. Uh, get Romans 6, 22 and 23 and stand to your feet. Amen. All right. Okay. 
I, I need you to keep an eye on that telephone because if his name, if his name comes up, I got to send a messenger on the run. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Everybody ready to read? Okay. Romans 6, verses 22 and 23. All right. Let's read it all together. It says, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Verse number 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the Lord bless you. You may be seated. The word of the Lord is blessed. I want to zero in uh, not on verse number 23, but I want to zero in on verse number 22. Verse number 22 says, we're made free from sin. We have become servants to God. Can you say with me, servants to God? That's my subject this morning. My subject is servants to God. How many know that you're a servant of God? Look at somebody and say, I'm free to serve. Free to serve. In this passage of scripture, the Apostle Paul's encouragement to us as believers has information that is both uplifting and encouraging. When you read these two verses of scripture, it should uplift you if you're not feeling, uh, can I say, as energetic and as motivated as you would like to feel, these passages or these verses of scripture will uplift you and encourage you. How many love uplifting things? Yeah. Encouraging things. I love people to come around and talk good things. I have a problem when people start complaining too much around me. Being negative because you know negative information can get in your spirit and change your mood. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here? Amen. Amen. I've had the experience of feeling good until I got around somebody and listened to them talk for a while. Then when I left, I didn't feel as well as I did. And by the same token, I have not felt so well and got in the presence of some people. And when I left them, I felt better than when I met them. You ought to want everybody to feel uplifted after being in your presence. Amen, somebody. And so Paul is masterful when it comes to uplifting us with the word of the Lord. In fact, in verse number 22, he informs us, lets us know that we have been made free from sin. When I think of the word made, I often think of that scripture that Jesus said, uh, you shall know the truth and the truth shall. There's a difference in being made free and set free. To be set free, sometimes all you have to do is open the door for somebody. But sometimes to make people free, you have to break a door down to give them liberty. I was watching a news story on last night, and it was a story about these school children that had got kidnapped in a bus and the people that kid somebody else seen it didn't you and the ones that kidnapped them hid them in a gravel pit bus and all and these children recounted their story about how they put mattresses together and put things together and stood on each other's shoulders to get up to a manhole cover and push it off that was covered with heavy, y'all don't hear me in here. It's one thing to be set free, it's another thing to be made free. Made free is against opposition. Amen. Those children, little children, elementary age children, worked together, got out of that place, got that manhole cover out with the bus driver, and worked their way to freedom. Made me think about the devil. Always trying to hide you somewhere, put a lid over you, and put a weight on the lid. 
And sometimes it takes the gospel of Jesus Christ not to set you free, but. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Talk back in here this morning. Amen. Make you free. Paul said that we've been made free from sin and not just that. And we have become servants to God, which means when we were bound, we were not God's servants. We weren't free to be God's servants, but God freed us. And after being made free, now we're servants to God. It's uplifting because we've been freed and liberated from the burden of sin, its consequences, and its penalty. Sin has a burden. It's heavy. There are consequences. There's a, a, a reaction from sin. And then there's a penalty and a payoff to sin. And when I think about that, I think about Kirk Franklin's song. Every now and then, uh, I like some of Kirk Franklin's song. I ain't talking about you. I'm just talking about me. Y'all remember that album that came out? That man said, that's that old Kirk Franklin mess. I need me some James Cleveland. <laughs> well, I kind of understood what he meant, but it's the message. See, if the message is right, even Kirk Franklin's song will work for you. And so I found one that worked for me this morning when it talks about freedom. They don't sing this in church much anymore, but we used to sing it all the time. It's entitled, I Am Free. It says, I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. You had to throw a hallelujah in there. Hallelujah. I'm free. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. I just thought I needed to sing that in there. So he got it right that time. And, and we get free from the burden and the consequences of the penalty of sin because the consequences of sin are dire. They're serious consequences, serious penalties. In fact, sin in and of itself separates us from our holy and righteous God and Father. Sin doesn't allow us to have fellowship or communion with God. And when you don't have fellowship and when you don't have communion with God, you are deprived of a parent. You're deprived of your heavenly father. You're like a fatherless child when you don't have fellowship with God. Because God is our heavenly father. Jesus told us that when we address him, address him, our heavenly father. Thank you, Jesus. And while we're in sin, we not only experience a fatherless spiritual existence, but what is worse is that there's a penalty and a payoff to it. There's compensation. Uh, is what the term means for sin. The paycheck for sin is death. For all of our efforts while we're in sin, the only payoff and the only consequences, and people who are saved have found this out, you didn't know how hard you had it until you found the Lord. Bless his name. The only compensation of sin is a hard life. You can look at people who have lived what I call a hard life. And it's a life where they have given over to the urges of sin. Ain't nobody saying nothing here. 
I ain't going to call no names, but I meet some of the people that I went to high school with. You can look at them and tell they had a hard life. Thank you, Jesus. I had somebody get mad at me because we walked into the same place. We were only a couple of uh, years apart, and somebody asked me, is that your father next to you? It was trouble. It was trouble. It wasn't my trouble, but there was some trouble in there. A hard life is the compensation for sin and for all our efforts. The only payoff is a hard life. And the Bible says, it says it to us, that the way of a transgressor is hard. When you know to do right and you don't do right, it takes a heavy toll on your life. Amen, somebody. Amen. It's a hard life. The life of a transgressor. Transgressor is one who goes over a boundary. When you forget the teaching of your, of your youth, when you forget the thing that you've been taught, when you go and, and act like you don't, you know, the old folks said like you don't have any home training, that are, those, those, they'll come up the roost again. Bless his name. So the way of a transgressor is hard. And, and then after a hard life, the conclusion of that hard life is death. Death by definition means separation. And anything you don't control will control you. And if you let things control you, it will separate you from things that you need. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. And so if you control your liquor, you can keep your license. You don't control your liquor, your liquor will control you and you'll lose your license. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. D-U-I, D-W-I, I heard about it. So death means separation. And watch this. Not just death of our spirit separating out of our physical body. Because the Bible says as the body without the spirit is dead. But it's not just a natural death. Included in that death is the second death. Which is spiritual death. It is eternal separation from God. In Sunday school this morning, we got off into a vein uh, of being separated from God. And, and Jesus goes into the Garden of Gethsemane and this, this possibility of being separated from God because he's never been separated from God. He's always been with the Father. He and the Father have been one in the eternal and dateless past. And now here in the middle of time, there is an occasion where Jesus has to separate himself long enough to die. He's agonizing over it. He's praying and sweat is falling like great drops of blood. Sometimes we lose the passion of his prayer. He is not saying, Lord, if it be possible. He's pleading with God. If there's any other way to do this, let it pass. If you can, God, you can do all things. That's what we would be praying. You can do all things. Let it pass. He didn't pray it once. He wouldn't pray it three times. And his ace partners who should have been praying with him fell asleep. Ever had people fall asleep when you're in a dire circumstance? Father, if it be possible, because he's contemplating this separation from God. But watch this. He's only separated long enough to die. But sin is going to take you into an eternal separation from God. Never to see him again. Never to hear a prayer again. Never to feel his anointing again. Never to receive his blessing again. The Bible says that the, the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Bless his name. And so sin, the wages, Paul said of sin is death. That term wages means compensation. It's the payoff of sin. And the payoff is not only physical death, but it is spiritual death. And that's why sin and the burden of sin is too heavy for us to bear. The price of sin is too high for us to live any longer therein. So it is very uplifting to know 
When you understand the penalty and the power of sin, it's very uplifting for you to know that Jesus and his sacrificial death on the cross, that we have been made free from the burden, from the consequences, and from the penalty of sin. Look at somebody say, I'm free from the burden. That means you have no more chains binding you. Look at somebody say, I'm free from the consequences. That means your soul is resting. And say, I got, say, I'm free from the penalty. Now you know that's a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. So it's encouraging to know not only that we've been made free from sin, but we've received a promotion from God. We're not only slaves or no longer slaves of sin. We're no longer servants of sin, but we've been promoted now to ministers and servants of God. Uh, not in our text, but earlier up in verse number 16, Paul tells us that whoever we yield ourselves to obey, that's whose servant we are. We are not what we say out of our mouths. We are who we obey. And if we obey the devil, if we obey the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, we become servants of the devil. Incidentally, that term servant means bond slave. It means held against your will, against your desire. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, my brother and I, we would wrestle and fight. And I hated it if my brother got a chance to get on top of me when I was on my back and hold both of my arms down by the wrist. Because you want to get free and you can't get free. And that's what sin does to you. Oh, it's fun while you're working your way through it. But eventually it's going to pin you on your back with both of your hands back. And then when you want to get away from it, isn't that the way habits are? The first time you get the habit, it's a nice pleasure. And then when it starts taking all your money and taking all your time, then you want to get away from it. And then it's not so easy to get away from. Oh, chocolate was good when I started eating it, but chocolate got a hold on me. And when it got to the place that it's taking my money, taking my time, taking my health, and then I want to get free from it. And every time I would step away from it, it would call and draw me back. That's funny when we're talking about chocolate, but it ain't funny when we're talking about tobacco. That's not funny when we're talking about crack. That's not funny when we're talking about prescription drugs. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. And so it's a bond servant, and if you obey, that's whose servant you are. You are the servant of the one you obey back in the 60s. Some of y'all will remember this song, but a rock group put it out saying, you're going to have to serve somebody. Say, it may be the devil and it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. That means you can't serve two masters. You can't hold to one because if you hold to one, you're going to despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. It's the one that you obey. That's whose servant you are. But the Bible says when we confess Jesus Christ as our Savior, when we confess with our mouth, when we believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead and a death that he died on the cross in our place for our stead, the Bible says we are made free. And whom the Son hath set free is free indeed. The old folks say, show enough free. It means you're free for real. You don't have to worry about the things that are trying to pull you down. Look at somebody say, I'm free. Tell them, say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, I'm free. I'm just about done. And so now we've been made. Now we've been made free. Now we've been loosed from the things that are hindering us. We've been loosed from the things that are holding us back. We have, we, 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 we have been loosed from the things that are trying to hold us down. That is now we're free to use the power of our will to do right instead of doing wrong. Now we are free to use the power 
power of our thoughts to think positive things instead of negative things. Now we are free to use our motives to go towards good instead of our instincts to go towards bad. Now we are able to give actions that glorify God and that promote the kingdom of God. We then have been liberated to let our light shine and glorify the Father which is in heaven. That's why, that's why Jesus said, let your light so shine. Let your light shine among men. Let people see how there's been a change in your life. Let people see that God came into your life. And when Christ came on the inside, you became a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is not a remodeled creature, not a made over creature, not a renovated creature, but he is a new creature. Look at somebody say new creature new creature in Christ Jesus and since Jesus has come into our lives and since Jesus has made us free and since Jesus has promoted us from serving the devil and serving the wicked one now we are servants of God now we are servants to God we 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 are serving the king of kings and we are serving the Lord of lords and we are now a chosen generation not just chosen by God but we are a royal priesthood we are a holy nation uh, we have become a peculiar people uh, and what makes us chosen uh, and what makes us royal uh, and what makes us holy uh, and what makes us peculiar uh, is that we have been selected uh, to show forth the praises of him uh, that brought us out of darkness uh, into the marvelous light uh, yeah Yes, Lord, uh, now we are servants, uh, servants of God. Uh, and as a servant of God, uh, we've been promoted. Uh, our status has changed. Uh, we are no longer strangers. Uh, our aliens to the commonwealth of the God. But now we have been adopted uh, into the royal family. Uh, we've been grafted in uh, uh, to the family of God. Uh, we've been selected uh, to serve the Lord. Uh, serve him with gladness. Uh, we come before his presence. Uh, we come with singing. Uh, we're thankful unto him. Uh, we bless his name uh, because the Lord is good. Uh, his mercy is everlasting. Uh, his truth endures. His truth endures to every generation. So I got to close this. After we've been promoted, we have been licensed and deputized to bring forth good works. You all remember Andy would go and get Goober and deputize him, hang a badge on him. Give him one bullet uh, and say, now enforce the law. Uh, but God, uh, help me say God. God licensed us, uh, deputized us, uh, and gave us a bullet uh, of good works uh, against the enemy. Uh, I said, God uh, licensed us uh, to do good works. Uh, not be conformed uh, to this world uh, but be transformed uh, by the renewing uh, of your mind uh, that you may prove uh, what is that good uh, perfect uh, and acceptable uh, will of God uh, yes Lord look at somebody say I've been chosen for good works. Just tell them, I've been chosen to glorify God. I've been chosen to make God look good. I've been chosen to be an ambassador. I've been chosen to be a representative. I've been chosen to give him the glory. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I've been chosen. I've been made free. I've been chosen. Loose from my chains. I've been chosen to glorify God. Thank you, Jesus. I've been chosen. Look, somebody say, I've been chosen. Thank you, Jesus. I've been chosen to smile in trouble. I've been chosen to give glory to God with trouble on my step. I've been chosen in the face of illness to give God the glory. I've been chosen to lift him high when I got things that are pushing me down. I've been chosen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad the Democrats didn't have to elect me. I'm very glad, very, very glad that the Republicans didn't have to select me. I'm glad God in his infinite, his infinite wisdom made choice of me. And he made choice of you. You've been made, so look at somebody say, I've been made free. Since you've been made free, stay free. The Bible says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And it says, don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Thank you, Jesus. Don't get tangled up again with the things that had you tangled up before. You better hear me here. Don't let the thing that tripped you up before trip you up again. Stay free. Thank you, Jesus. At home, I got a cord drawer. Anybody know anything about a cord drawer? Every adapter or power plug or old earplugs and earphones and come on here. You throw them all together in one place. It's funny. You throw them in there one by one. But some kind of way. <laughs> they all tangled together. And sometimes you need one of them cords and you find the end of the cord you need. But you got a job to do before you can use it. That's about how it goes. Watch this. And then some of us, when we get done with it, you know what we do with it? Take it, throw it right back in there. And when you get ready for it again. There's a remedy. The sound man will absolutely appreciate this example. We had so many microphones here that every time it got time to use a microphone, we had to untangle the microphones. Along with the microphone cords, we had the speaker cords. We had the piano cords. We had the power cords. We had the speaker, I mean, just cord, 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 cord. One day, me and Chris came over here with rubber bands and ties. We separated all of them, but after we got them separated, we bound them together so that they couldn't tangle. We, we, we compartmentalized them so they didn't interfere with other. Are you with me? There's a principle here. To stay free, you can't allow certain things to mingle in. It's funny how five good apples can sit in a bushel with no problem. 
all it takes is. Some of us don't have that experience. But I have the experience of having a bushel of apples. One on the bottom that I didn't know was bruised. And because it was bruised, it's seeping juice, which gets oxidized when it's air and turns brown. And what happens, that, that one bad apple starts to rot. And every apple it touches, it shares its rottenness. You got people just like that. Don't love the Lord and they're rotten. Don't look at me. I, the Bible said worse than I said. They're not satisfied till they rot somebody else. That's why the Bible says come from among them. Doesn't mean don't try to be saved or get them saved. But it does mean you can't run shoulder to shoulder, buddy, buddy with them. Be not deceived. Don't be fooled. Evil communications. Evil communications. You could, have been, you could have been raised correctly, taught properly. Have you ever wondered how you spend five, six, seven, eight years teaching and training your children a certain way? And sometimes all they have to do is get in one class and get next to one student. And all that training. Seems to be going out the window. Amen. You teach them not to cuss. They get around one little joker who free to cuss. And they learn words. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. And so we are free. And we're free to serve God. You stop listening to these people who tell you that serving God is a bunch of rules and regulations. We don't have a gun on you. You can quit anytime you get ready. But you're free to serve him. We don't, we don't get that because we're not in a country where it's against the law to congregate and call on the name of God. We're not in a country where you can get together and have a Bible study and have the police break in on your Bible study. And carry you off to jail. We're not in a nation that tries to prohibit us from singing the praises and the glory of God. Yet. You can see the way things are going. You can see the handwriting on the wall. And the devil has so many things mixed up here together. That somebody's going to say, I know how to stop this division. We're just going to make everybody walk by the same rule. And when we get to that place, and we're going there. When we get there, you better make your calling and your election sure. Because living for the Lord is going to be at a cost. It's getting there now. People treat you just treat you good on the job till they find out you love the Lord. Something happened when they find that out. It's like they turn. I, when you first come in, I, it happens to me at the gym all the time. Because when you go to the gym, you talk gym talk. Hey, man, what's up? Come on, let's ball. Then when they start cussing, I say, hey, man, you can calm that down. Calm what down? I, I said, do you have to cuss every time you come down court? Then it's, oh, you one of them. Yes, yes, I am. They're, they're kids in the gym. Honor, honor the kid. Honor the kids. Honor other people. Oh, and, and then from then on, <laughs> then it's a grudge match. But you know what? If you don't stand for something, 
Why is it everybody standing up for their rights now except for saints for their faith? Well, they coming out the, out the closet. They've been out the closet so long, they on the parade route now. Riding the floats, waving the flag. Look at somebody say, servants of God. Free to serve. Man, I want to deputize you this morning. I want to release you to go to Nineveh. Nineveh is the place you should go, and you're not there yet. When God got ready to send Jonah to Nineveh, he went the other direction, just like some of us have. Some of us scared of preaching, scared of teaching. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here, but I'm here now. I'm here. It's Nineveh. It's where God has called you to that you haven't come into agreement with yet. And all it takes is a yes, because anytime God sends you somewhere, he's going to make provision for you to operate while you're there. So I want to pray with you today. I want you to stand right where you are. If you know God got a call on your life and you've been kind of slow getting around to it. Bow your heads. Y'all stop looking around. When heads are bowed, you know ain't nobody looking at you. God has not given us the spirit of fear. When you have fright, that is the work of the enemy. You got to have a healthy respect and reverence for God, fear in that regard. But you are not, are y'all ready? Come on, I'm here I come. You are not to get terrified when they call you to pray. You're not to get terrified when they call you to read the scripture. You're not to get terrified if they say, we want you to have a three-minute expression on the goodness of the Lord. You're not supposed to freeze. You're supposed to think about how good God been for, you know, been to you. And then it's not what do I say, it's what do I cut out so that I only stay in three minutes. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. You start counting blessings. You ain't going to have time for nothing else. You just took two breaths that you need to thank God for. Your heart just beat six times that you need to thank God for. You just had blood run through. You got blood running through your vein right now. Oh, your eyes are working. Your ears are working. You're on your feet. You have your balance. So many things to thank God for. And all he's asking you is to give back to him what he gave you. Now I'm giving back to you all the tools you gave to me, my hands, my ears, my voice, my eyes, so you can use them as you please. I've emptied out my cup. Got rid of all my stuff so that you could fill it up. Now, here it is. I'm free. I just want to be more available to you. Lift your hands to God. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say my storage is empty and I, and I am of a Love to you, Father, in the name. In the name of Jesus, they are on their feet, not responding to me. They are responding to you. Now I'm giving back to you 
all the tools you gave to me my hands my ears my voice my eyes you can use them as you please i have emptied out my cup so that you can fill it up come on now i'm free i just want to be more available to you lord lord i'm available to you you my my will i give to you I'll do what you say do use me Lord to show someone the way and enable me to say say my yes it is and I am to you Lord I'm available I'm available I'm available I'm available Father I'm available use me as you see fit help me to be an instrument of God a servant to God to perform and to do your will I pray, oh God, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would fall upon each of them, infuse them with courage and confidence that they would go forward and do your work and do your will. Now open your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for anointing. I thank you for a will to do what you have asked me to do. I thank you, Lord, for every gift for every ability I thank you for every talent I thank you for time I thank you for a will to do your work now help me speak through me go with me so that your will is done in Jesus name now everybody is open your mouth clapping your hands thank God for his anointing open your mouth thank open your mouth open your mouth and bless the Lord bless the Lord in here bless the Lord in here glory to God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus look at somebody and say yes you can tell them say you can do it tell them again say yes you can yes you can the enemy wants to tell you you can't do it yes you can he wants you to think it's too much for you to handle to whom much is given much is required you got so much on you because there's so much required of you walk up with him thank you Jesus hallelujah clap your hands one more time hallelujah 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 glory 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 if you don't know the Lord it's time to know him if you don't know the Lord it's time to know him okay it's time to come off the devil's slave block. Don't let the devil sell you to the highest bidder. It's time to be servants of God. Amen. If you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, you want to be saved today, raise your hand right where you are. Glory to God. If you don't know the Lord, my storage is empty, and I am available to you. One more time, my storage is empty, my storage. 
edges in. That means I'm empty, Lord. You can feel me. And I am available to you. To you. You, you, you. My story is empty. And I, and I am available to you. How many know you're available to God? Amen. Use me, Lord, in thy service. Draw me nearer every day. Because, Lord, I'm willing. How many willing to go all the way? That's an old song. That's an old song. All right. God bless you. Amen. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you all for your prayers. Amen. How many have felt the presence of the Lord in our midst today? Amen. I feel like I can go on a little long, go on a little farther now. Amen. I don't know how some people sit out of church. I don't know how they do it. I don't, I don't know how they do it. I ain't, I'm not even going to tell you how many hours of sleep I've had in the last three days. Even, I ain't gonna even go there. But when you lose sleep, it can leave you without energy. But it's something about getting in the praises. It's something about the presence of the saints that'll charge your battery. Amen. Make you feel like going on again. Amen. All right. God bless you. Are there any announcements? Yes. Okay. All right. Easter program. Amen. All right. Here come Mother Kyra. Look. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the word of God? Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Um, I just have a few things that I need to touch bases with. And glad everyone is here. Number one, last week we had prayer on Monday. On, at 6.30 on uh, Wednesday and on Friday. And we had a powerful time. We thank God for all of the prayer warriors. However, our journey has does not stop on last week. It is still a 911 call at this time for Elder Bobby Bush. We must, those that are strong, have to bear the infirmity of the week. And it is, if you were in a predicament like he has been through within the last six months. You would want somebody praying on their face before God for you. So the journey continues. On tomorrow, we will have prayer at 6.30. On Wednesday at 6 o'clock. On Friday at 6.30. Amen. The Bible does say, whether two or three are gathered together in my name, that he is in the midst but we would like to see more than just two to three people. Amen. Elder Bobby belongs not to just two or three people. He belongs to all of us. So we encourage you, we encourage you to come out to prayer on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. To be able to come together and to petition God and to stand in the gap for our brother. Amen. Clap your hands if you agree with that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And please continue to keep the entire Bush family and our pastor in your prayers. Amen. Also, this is um, on the month of April. I call it the 6429 month. Pastor has a birthday on April the 3rd. Amen. Praise God. I think he's, he's thinking about it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and we will be celebrating 29 years pastoral anniversary. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our theme, which was already um, talked about earlier, is celebrating strong and courageous leaders. Amen. Our subtopic is we've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. All right, that's an old cut. Uh huh. <laughs> Trusting in His holy word. Mm -hmm. He never failed me yet. 
You remember that, Sister Gaither, don't you? Oh, can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. Ooh, ooh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That would preach, but not right now. But that is the subtopic for the anniversary. We are encouraging all of you. We don't want to disappear in the month of April. We don't want to disappear in the month of April. We know we are going to be celebrating pastoral anniversary every Sunday besides Easter Sunday. Amen? So on the first Sunday, which is April the 2nd, Pastor DeWitt Jackson from Revival Center. Amen. He is going to be our special guest for that morning. On the 9th, we know that is Easter, so we are going to be celebrating the children, amen, under the direction of Mother Vera Drew. On the 16th will be Bishop Coates and First Redeemed by the Blood. On the 23rd will be Pastor Harris and Oak Ridge Temple, Church of God in Christ. On the climax, Pastor Lester Bush. On the 30th, Dupree Temple Memorial, Church of God in Christ. We have wonderful guests that are coming. We are planning to have a just a fantastic time, but most of all, it's going to be revival. We need to be praying now for God's spirit and approval to be on the anniversary. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're looking for God to have just to just to have his way on next month. Most of all, we are praying for, my prayer has been for us to really have a, a huge encouragement for our pastor. Amen. Anybody that has gone through as much as he has gone through, especially with family and with difficulties, sometimes just a pat on the back or an encouraging word goes a long way. Sometimes you can smile and be an encouragement to somebody. So we want to do this in a great way. Also, um, for his birthday, there will be information that's going to be forthcoming. We are going to have a celebration for him, a birthday party. So we will be getting more information to you all. So I just wanted to put that out there. Assessment is we're asking each member for $50 for the 